Prince Harry and Meghan Markle have flown out of Australia, bound for Fiji, as they continue their first royal tour as a married couple. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex arrived back from Fraser Island on Tuesday morning after spending the previous day staying at a luxury resort on the Queensland Island. The royal couple were then driven to Herview Bay Airport, where they waved to a crowd of onlookers before stepping on board a Qantas plane. On arrival in Fiji, their royal highnesses will be greeted by a guard of honor at Suva Airport, before calling on the country's president at Boron House. Pregnant Meghan's Australian schedule was scaled back on Sunday and Monday but the Duchess is expected to be by her husband's side at all their planned engagements in Fiji and Tonga, according to media reports. The Duchess's visit the Pacific Island nations despite fears over the Zika virus, going against travel advice that pregnant women should consider not traveling to the countries because of the moderate risk of catching the tropical disease. But Kensington Palace said the couple had sought medical advice and decided to continue with their plans, with no change expected to their itinerary. After their visit to Boron House, the Duke and Duchess will then attend an official welcome ceremony in the city centre's Albert Park. From there, the royal couple will leave Albert Park for the Grand Pacific Hotel to attend a reception and a state dinner hosted by Fiji's president, where Prince Harry will give a speech. On Wednesday, his Royal Highness will lay a wreath at the Fiji War Memorial and meet a number of Fijian war veterans, some of whom served with the British Armed Forces. The royal couple will then visit the University of the South Pacific campus in Suva. From here, their program will split. The Duke will travel to Kolo I Suva Forest Park and the Duchess to the British High Commissioner's residence, before she heads to Suva Market. On Thursday, the royal couple will travel to the city of Nadi in western Fiji, where they will attend a special event at Nadi Airport. After an official welcome ceremony, the Duke and Duchess will unveil a new statue commemorating Sergeant Delayasi Labalab. From Nadi Airport, their royal highnesses will take a chartered flight to Tonga. In Tonga's new Kulalafa, the pair will visit the St. George Building for a call on the Prime Minister Akilai Zipohiva and members of the cabinet. From there, they will attend an exhibition with the Princess Angelica at the Fona Lua Center and then travel to Tupu College. The Duke and Duchess later travel to the Royal Palace for an official farewell with the King before heading back to Sydney for the closing ceremony of the Invictus Games. The couple are expected to attract huge crowds during their time in Fiji and Tonga but some are criticizing the timing of the visit to Fiji, which comes less than three weeks before the country's elections. Rodden Nair, who was Fiji's Foreign Affairs Permanent Secretary until he resigned last year, says he is concerned Fijian Prime Minister Frank Bainimrama will take full advantage of the royal couple's widespread publicity. Fijians love the royals. And the government knows that there will be great euphoria and joy created by the visit, Mr Nair said in a statement provided to the ABC. He said he is concerned the incumbent Prime Minister will use photo opportunities with Harry and Meghan to paint himself in a positive light. Another outspoken former government official, Shailendra G. Rayu, condemned the visit in a Facebook post. In a letter addressed to the UK High Commissioner to Fiji, Mr Rayu called for the visit to be postponed to a mutually convenient and more appropriate time. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex have arrived on Queensland's Fraser Island as their whirlwind tour down under continues, with Prince Harry taking part in a traditional welcome to country ceremony as a pregnant Meghan Markle rests at a luxury resort. After touching down in Queensland on Monday morning from Sydney, the royal couple went their separate ways. The Duke took the barge to the island, which was reportedly refurbished ahead of the occasion, while the Duchess, dressed in a maroon, Polka dot dressed by in other stories, arrived on a whale-watching vessel. Crowds had lined up along the Kingfisher jetty to catch a glimpse of the couple as they stepped off their boats, with both the Duke and Duchess giving a wave to excited onlookers when they arrived. During their time on the island, the couple will be based at the luxurious Kingfisher Bay Resort, which boasts secluded beach houses, timber lodges surrounded by the bush and deco-friendly hotel rooms. Prince Harry and Meghan earlier appeared relaxed as they boarded a Royal Australian Air Force jet at Sydney Airport, 
bound for the wilderness island, after traveling from Admiralty House, their harbor city accommodation. Hervey Bay Eco Marine Tourist posted a photo of the Duchess on their Instagram page with the caption, Very exciting day here today at the marina. The glowing Meghan Markle passing through on her way to Curry. Their Royal Highnesses are visiting Fraser Island or Curry as it is known by the traditional owners the Butchola people, as part of the dedication of the site to the Queen's Commonwealth Canopy, QCC. The QCC raises awareness of indigenous forests and allows countries in the Commonwealth to exchange knowledge and ideas about the best practice for forest conservation. The Duke of Sussex later headed to Lake Mackenzie after the QCC dedication and meet with local elders to learn about the history of the island, before heading down to 75 Mile Beach as part of a busy day of engagements. Prince Harry took off his shoes and walked in the shallows of the lake after the welcome to country where he had his feet brushed with leaves during the indigenous ceremony. The expecting Duchess of Sussex is foregoing her royal duties for the day due to the rough terrain of the island, but there will be plenty for her to do even as tourist. Kensington Palace has confirmed Meghan will spend Monday relaxing at the resort, where the couple will spend the night but she is hoped to be well enough for a meet and greet with the public later in the afternoon. He spent a considerable amount of time talking to the local Butchola people who showed him around the world's largest sand island. The Duke was expected to take particular interest in his visit to the beach, as it served as a training base for an elite Z Special Force unit during World War II. The unit used the area to prepare for jungle and amphibious training ahead of missions into Asia and are credited with playing a major role in Australia's victory at Singapore Harbour. The ruins of the Z Force Commando School remain on the western side of the island, nearby the resort. While on Fraser Island, Prince Harry will also meet National Park Rangers to learn about the island's unique animal and plant life and its history of logging. Due to their famed toughness, Fraser Island's hardwood trees were used to build the London docks in the 1930s. Later, the Duke will head to Kingfisher Bay and walk along the jetty hopefully with Meghan. The couple are expected to be greeted by an enthusiastic crowd of fans, as tickets to cross to Kingfisher Bay have sold out for the day. Fraser Island is the fourth stop on the royal couple's Australian leg of their tour, after they visited Sydney, Dubbo, in the New South Wales Central West, and Melbourne. Following their visit to Fraser Island, the royal couple are heading to Fiji then Tonga before a trip back to Sydney for the closing ceremony of the Invictus Games. Their mammoth 16-day tour finishes in New Zealand. Pregnant Meghan Markle was absent from the morning engagement on day six of the Duke and Duchess's royal tour of Oceania following a hectic five days. The Duchess of Sussex was due to join Prince Harry to support the Invictus Games cyclists but decided to cut back on her duties after a jam-packed start to the tour. A royal aide said, she's feeling fine, but resting. The royal couple are six days into their tour of Oceania which will see them visit Australia, New Zealand, Fiji, and Tonga. The aide added, after a busy program. The Duke and Duchess have decided to cut back the Duchess's schedule slightly for the next couple of days, ahead of the final week and a half of the tour. The Duke will attend the cycling as scheduled this morning, and the Duchess will join him for this afternoon's engagements. The Duke will continue with the engagements on Fraser Island as planned. The pregnant Duchess, who announced she will be having a baby last week, had a late night on Saturday after the Invictus Games opening ceremony started later than expected due to weather. Meghan is now expected to miss a series of events over the remainder of the tour. A source said they just want to pace her as both she and Prince Harry have a lot of events left. Prince Harry told competitors that Meghan is resting back at home during his morning event. Being pregnant takes its toll he added. However. The Duke and Duchess will attend a reception held by the Australian Prime Minister Scott Morrison later today. Meghan is now expected to skip some of the events during the couple's planned visit to Fraser Island on Monday. The couple were expected to visit the island's rainforests, attend a welcome to country smoking ceremony with the traditional owners of Kagari, the Butchola people and the Premier of Queensland, visit one of the island's lakes.
the pair will then travel to Kingfisher Bay by boat. Kensington Palace is yet to announce whether any engagements after day six and seven of the tour will be changed. Meghan is still expected to travel with Harry to Fiji and Tonga but it is possible there may be some adjustments to her program there as well. Oh, <laughs> oh,